Super Election Year 2011. How is the SPD faring? In the interview, SPD leader Sigmar Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel, let's review the four recent state elections. A great success in Hamburg, a perhaps disappointing but passable performance in Saxony-Anhalt. You lost the absolute majority in Rhineland-Pfalz, and you came in third in Baden-Württemberg. But the amazing thing is that the SPD is governing four states. Does it feel like victory or defeat? One certainly does not feel content unless one wins every election. We would be an odd party if we were pleased even when we don't do well. But if we consider the state elections we have had this year and last, we took over from the CDU in North Rhine-Westphalia and in Hamburg. We shall remain in a coalition government with the CDU in Saxony-Anhalt, though we had hoped to win more votes than the left party there. And if we had only won one percentage point more in Baden-Württemberg, then our candidate for state premier, Nils Schmidt, would have taken the lead. But I see the elections in Reinhard-Pfalz and Baden-Württemberg not so much as regular state elections and more as a referendum on nuclear energy. People voted for the party they thought stood most clearly for abandoning it, and the Greens are that party in Germany. You've also been fighting for years against nuclear energy, even as environment minister. Surely the SPD can rightly claim that badge of honor too, and attract a few more votes. You don't have to leave it to the Greens. Each party is associated with certain core concerns. For the Social Democrats, it's social justice, the economy and social cohesion. For the Greens, it's opposition to nuclear power. That was part of their founding agenda. As environment minister, I never saw myself as fighting the Greens battle, but as pursuing social democratic policy. We have long called for phasing out nuclear power. We set the course for that with Gerhard Schröder. But voters don't see it as part of our brand, as one of our core issues, which is social justice and economic strength. That is why I don't think we should be all too sad about the outcomes. For Germany, these were great results. There is no turning back now. We shall phase out nuclear energy. That is the upshot of these last two states elections. As a former environment minister, I am delighted about that. You're sure there is no turning back? I think Angela Merkel has no more room to maneuver, at least concerning the seven oldest reactors. They will be decommissioned permanently. Whether she will pursue a wise policy and close down the rest as swiftly as possible, I can't say. The problem with Angela Merkel is that you never quite know what her position will be tomorrow. But I think on this issue there is no turning back. At the next general election at the latest, there will be a clear majority against the policies of the CDU and FDP. The CDU and FDP policies are not popular. People say they're not being well governed. Opinion polls confirm that. But the SPD is not really benefiting from that. That's not really the case. We are at just under 30 percent. We were at 23. There are three parties left of centre now, which was not the case 20 or 30 years ago. But if we advance slowly but surely towards 30 percent support and beyond, we will have a clear majority with the Greens and without the left party. That is our goal. We want to make it with the Greens alone, without having to depend on the left party. The problem for Germany now is that we don't actually have a federal government. We see them flip-flopping on all kinds of issues. First there was to be tax cuts, now they are increasing the tax burden. First they said no help for Greece, now Germany has to cough up billions. First they wanted to extend the life of nuclear power plants, now they want out. What does the government really stand for? We are the biggest economy in Europe, and industry and working people need a clear political framework, and there just isn't one at the moment. You're convinced that Germany will have abandoned nuclear power within 10 or 15 years. Are you not surprised that our neighbors in Europe are not conducting a similar debate on the issue? That is not quite right. 
Half the EU member states don't have nuclear power or want to give it up. But you are right that the rest, especially Eastern European countries and France, want to expand their nuclear energy industry. I think that's because they're very dependent on nuclear power, which we are not. Or started to develop renewable energy sources far too late, France and Britain for example. And in Eastern Europe they are still worried about being too dependent on Russia. But I don't think it will happen. They have been vowing for years to build more nuclear power plants, but they are not actually being built. Not in the United States, nor in Britain, France or Eastern Europe. That's because they are just too expensive and because of the unresolved problems of what to do with nuclear waste. That's an issue we have to address in Germany too. While we were in coalition with the Conservatives, we made a proposal to Angela Merkel in 2006, which she just dismissed. We have to solve this if we are to develop a consensus on energy policy. In the, in the days of Willy Brandt and Helmut Schmidt in the 1970s, the SPD won lots of support because it both protected ordinary people, poor people, and also held out the promise of social advancement through education. Is that a recipe for success today as well? Advancement through education is certainly still a key issue in our country today. We have to make it happen. 70,000 youngsters enter the labor market every year without a decent education. At the same time, we complain about a lack of skilled workers. Well-qualified women don't have a career because they can't reconcile the demands of work and family. And too many well-qualified older workers end up unemployed or pensioned off early. We have to make sure that people in Germany can get ahead through achievement and work and education. But that only works if, at the same time, those who are doing well or very well also do their part. I'm a little shocked at the decline in solidarity. For example, in healthcare, it can't be right that those with average or low incomes pay into the healthcare funds that ensure the solidarity between the healthy and the sick, while the high earners are only concerned with themselves. That has to change. Progress must once again mean progress for all people in Germany, and not just a small group. Fortschritt muss wieder Fortschritt für alle Menschen in Deutschland werden und nicht nur für eine kleine Gruppe. Those are the social aspects of social democracy. But in the 1970s, the SPD was also very keen on the idea of scientific and technological progress. Has the SPD turned against science and technology, or is that a false impression? I certainly hope it is a false impression. I think the blind faith in progress that was common in the 60s and 70s has dissipated across society. Nuclear technology was born out of that faith. Genetic engineering is a very risky business, so it makes sense to evaluate the risks. On the other hand, without progress, we won't be able to maintain our prosperity or solve society's problems. The population of the world is six and a half billion. Fifty years ago, about the time I was born, it was just two and a half billion. And fifty years from now, it will be more than nine billion. And everyone will want to live in an industrialized society. Without technology to enable the efficient use of resources and a focus on renewable resources, that won't be possible. Technological advances are key. The problems facing industrialized societies cannot be solved with the methods of agricultural societies, but only with its own instruments. They require education, research and development and technology. Thanks for joining us today.